Hi, I'm Melissa Fumero, and I love my kids, but I am tired of being tired. <laughs> Asshole! <laughs> Asshole! <laughs> oh no, am I a harlot? Like what? <laughs> I was so pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, I gave birth like five days after we wrapped. Wow. So I was like nine months pregnant. So I'd specifically like to put on timeout the song, happy, happy, dance, dance, oh happy, God. happy, dance, uh-huh. dance. Oh and like, you see, yeah. you see Elmo's legs now. Yes. It puts a level of like it, a creepiness on yes. him. We're just like, get your fucking legs off the screen. <laughs> Folks, welcome to I Love My Kid, but the show that'll make you feel good because we feel bad. <laughs> uh, there will be no advice on this parenting show. It's just us. No experts. Having fun. I'm here, of course, with Chris Garcia and Megan Gailey. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. You're both looking sharp today. Oh, thank you. So are you. Sharp. Thank you. And uh, we, were, we This is exactly the conversation we were having yes. before. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then uh, I commented on <laughs> Megan has a, a, a delightful necklace. Um, I saw that it started with a C. I saw that it was gold. My first guess was, oh, is that say Carvel? It says Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> People ask all the time. They think it says Carrie because in Sex in the City, mm-hmm. Carrie wears like a nameplate. For herself. For herself. So she doesn't forget her own name. <laughs> well, she's one of the most self-centered narcissistic yeah, yeah, yeah. characters in exactly. modern day media. <laughs> um, and so people are like, does that say Carrie? Which is like so embarrassing because it's not my name and they think I'm wearing a character's name. And I'm like, oh, it's my son's name. We have a fantastic show today. Yeah. I'm very excited. Melissa Fumero is here. Ooh. Super funny. She's so excited. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I know. Yeah. It's such a great show. She's so funny on the show. And of course, we're going to be talking a little bit about cultural traditions that we don't want to pass down to our kids. Sunburn. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if we could just not teach sunburn. Yeah. That would be great. I'm actually probably like kind of in the clear because I oh, I yeah. diluted my Irish. You did. Yeah, so he gets pretty tan. That's pretty He's nice. Pretty tan. I saw a baby when we were coming back from vacation, full white baby. It was so tan like it was and it, the baby was six months old it looked like it had a spray tan I was like they did not put enough sunscreen on that white baby <laughs> I was judging like fully like I go wow that's a tan baby and the mom was like she did get tan yeah. <laughs> um, so we always start the show of course with a little thing we like to call circle time Chris, are you telling us our circle time I story am today? Telling today's circle time story. I'm so excited. So, shortly after Sunny was born, my mom came over to the house with a gift, mm-hmm. and that gift was baby cologne. <laughs> <laughs> it is a cologne. What? It's a Cuban cologne for babies. <laughs> uh, Gender neutral, though. It is gender neutral. So there's not a perfume. Uh, it smells like it's for a gigolo on the prowl, but it is... A p- gender neutral. It is gender neutral. Anyone could wear it. Uh, okay. And it's... all. And it's. I, I looked at the bottle. It's a splash... It says splash cologne. <laughs> that just, I don't know why the splashing is involved. I think it's like... I, I think it's because of how Cubans wear cologne. It's like they have jumped into a pool and it has splashed over anyone sitting in a lawn chair nearby. We douse ourselves in it and it's uh, it's a bit of a problem. Uh, this What's co- it called? It's called Aguas de Violetas, uh-huh. uh, which means uh, the struggle to assimilate. No. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no, it's it, in English. It's royal violets, and it's okay. yeah, it's supposed to smell uh, like violets. Okay, uh, it smells like a, I don't know a DJ Khaled's house. Like it's <laughs> it, like it smells like he has all of his friends are over in the same place. It's a very concentrated um, smell, and it's a tradition though. It's a mm-hmm. tradition amongst Cuban moms and their kids. It goes back to Cuba. The family that created this cologne moved to the United States. They brought it here. It's been popular with exile moms and their kids ever since. And and my mom put it on me when I was a kid, and now she wants to put it on Sunny. 
But the thing is that my mom is my mom, not Sonny's mom. <laughs> Val is Sonny's mom, and Val prefers uh, natural products, yeah. right? She's very kind of a, a cool si- Silver Lake like crunchy. White, a little yeah, bit. she's like, why don't we just rub dry lavender? that I got from a witch at the farmer's market <laughs> on Sunny Side. That's like that's wow. what she would want to do. Uh, she prefers a, a natural product, not this uh, purple <laughs> liquid not found anywhere in nature that on the back of the bottle says highly flammable, keep out of the reach of children. There's a disclaimer. So it's not made for children. It's, it's- for children. But it's also flammable. (laughs) And not supposed to be near children. Exactly. Which is a problem because if you're the type of parent that uh, puts cologne on a baby, you are actively smoking, right? So this is this is this is not great. Uh, But uh, I try to be nice to my mom about it Mm -hmm. because I know she really wants this. I'm like, okay, mom. Um, yeah, hey, oh wow. Wow, you put this on me when I was a kid. That's so awesome. What a flash from the past. And I'm like, you know, Mom, the thing is, uh, uh, babies already smell good. They smell it's good. True. Oh, they smell oh, so they smell good. That's best. like one of their main, main yeah. plus sides. It's their whole thing. Yeah. They smell like little yeah. muffins, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, Mom, you know, they smell like Y Febreze in a bakery. They uh-huh. smell perfect. Like, you don't need it. <laughs> and Val's coughing and stuff. And But I'm like, I but I have to like weigh this out. I'm like, do I want... The wrath of my mom. Yeah. You know? Or the wrath of my wonderfully patient Midwestern wife. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm willing to deal with that. Wow. More than my mom. Wow. So I have to explain to Val. I'm like, hey, th- I know you didn't grow up like this, uh, but in my culture, it's very important for newborns <laughs> to be g- combustible. They, they, it is important for them to be uh, to explode. Okay, that's like a certain thing in our culture. So why don't we just like when my mom comes over, just a little spritz on the back of her neck, and then we'll bust out the fire extinguisher and hope for the best. And so. That's that's what we've done is wow. just give her a Still. little spritz. No, we stopped. Okay. We stopped. But like the first couple times, uh-huh. mom's like, hi, <gasps> buenos dias. How's, ev- how's everyone? <laughs> She's like inspect like, uh, you know, and so we 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 did it for a while. And then we, we just kind it's of just stopped. Slowly but, kind of. But like, I'm like, I don't want to. What's more on. important, this or the pierced ears? Yeah. Pier- pierced that- ear. I mean, it's it's like it's. It pierced ears is still going on. Yeah. You know, Royal Violet, she's like, okay, whatever. I'm happy to see her, but she's like, we got to do the pierced ears. It is so interesting how scents just work into like a a, a pre-verbal part of your brain Mm -hmm. where you don't even realize they're there. It's happened with multiple people in my life where I'll be somewhere else and then I'll smell that scent and then I'll just be like immediately like back to like this experience with this person. Yes. Yeah, that happened with me with... Royal violets. Yeah. I smelled it, and I was like, "It's like I'm, I'm a, a witness baby. little prince again." <laughs> I was like, "It smell like it smells toxic," but I was like, "Here I am in my little three piece suit, walking around Hialeah, <laughs> oh picking every God. mango off the tree that I like, and my grandma just doting after me." Like it was like really? it was magical, and I was yeah. like, "I don't know." Yeah. Just a little bit, you know? As a Midwestern white, I would <laughs> venture to guess that Val's version of that is the subway sub shop smell. Oh, yeah, she's like, Jimmy John's. (laughs) Yeah, it's Jimmy John's. It's the bread from Jimmy John's. Oh, I love it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's just yeast. Just like, yeah, she's just like, we just put a little baker's yeast right here on the back. This would be real nice. Smells good and bad. I love it. Uh, Well, we'll be growing a lot of uh, exciting conversations (laughs) once (laughs) Melissa Fumero gets here. Who is Cuban? Yeah, that's so exciting. Our first Cuban guest. I can't not wait to talk Uh, to her. I will we'll be right back with Melissa Fumero. Well, you heard uh, today's guest earlier at the top of the show. Not only a talented actor that got her start on One Life to Live, you also know her as Amy Santiago on the very funny Brooklyn Nine-Nine. She also has two sons, Enzo and Alex, with her husband, David. Please, welcome to the show, Melissa Fumero. Thanks. It's actually Axel. It's Axel. Okay, what did I say? Alex. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, I have a I have a Conrad, and people are like, 
is it Connor? And I'm like, who in 2023 is naming their child Connor? And then I met a baby Connor, and I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I never realized that um, exes are really hard for yeah. little kids to say. So when we're like at a party or the playground, it's asshole, <laughs> asshole, <laughs> over here. And like the first time I heard it, another mom pointed it out to me. She was like, so did you? I was like, did not. I no. did not. <laughs> never occurred to me that until a certain age all of my son's friends will call him asshole. Yeah, but then it's a badass name. You yeah, know? yeah, it's real rock and roll. Um, at the top of the show you said you're tired of being tired. You look not tired. I'm and, just good at makeup. Okay, because we're not an advice-based podcast, but I'm like, if you want a sidebar <laughs> about your skincare, I, because I, like, when you came in, I was like, wow, her skin looks really good, and like, mom to mom, Thank you're like, you. damn, it like means, like, when I see, you know, just like a 20-year-old walking around with good skin, I go, you mean nothing. You've done nothing. You've done nothing but, to like, earn that. A, a mom with two kids and glowing skin, that's an Olympic sport. Thank you. Yeah. Very, it is actually. It is. <laughs> um, just so much time and money. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, but thank you. I appreciate that. But yes, I'm tired. <laughs> Melissa, very excited to have, personally, very excited. We're all excited, but personally, very excited because you're our first Cuban guest. Oh, the first? Cuba, the first Cuban guest. We tried to get oh Gloria Stefan, but she passed, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jose Asked Canseco the show, said no, not dead. and then Bezos. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Gloria is still very alive alone. Very, very alive. Yes, very, very much alive, making great shows. We love her. We love you, Gloria. Um, but uh, we we're at the top of the show, we we're talking about traditions yes. um, that our parents, you know, try to pass down into us. And so I was telling a story, a story about um, Aguas de Violetas. Yes. Are you familiar? I am very familiar. Uh, it's, um, have you put it on your boys? Have you been forced to put it on your boys? I have not put it on my boys. Wow. I felt like I had to whisper. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, I'm going to tell you why. Why? I believe very strongly that the scent of Violetas yeah. has changed. Oh, not from the original mm -hmm. formula. Not from okay. the original mm -hmm. formula. This might be controversial. Mm -hmm. But the scent that I remember that is so nostalgic to me is this very, like, light, lightly floral yeah. And now it's like a hard flower. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is up your nose, just like there's no, you could do the lightest splash and you smell that shit from like five rooms yeah. down. It smells like Four Loco and like Dracar Noir. Yes. It, it smells, smells like a Yankee candle now. <laughs> Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. It did not smell like that when we were kids. And it's purple now. It used and to it's be purple. like um like it used the, to be like liquidus? almond color. It was yes, like a nice little that's what I'm like my bed bath. It yes. was like a little It was like this light colored and now it's this weird fake. <laughs> I'm going to get so much hate for this. <laughs> so, I just threw out I found like three bottles <gasps> that you know were sent to us cuz yeah. we didn't buy that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I found three bottles like last year in the back of my son's closet, and I was like, "This is going in the trash." <laughs> I don't know if some ancestors are gonna come and like curse me, but I was like, "This is not the same. Someone has betrayed someone at some come, point." Your ancestors are gonna come douse you in the middle of the night. I they think are. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> Every time I sweat, I'm gonna smell it. <laughs> I did smell it a little bit, and I did bring the nostalgia back. Like I did think about being like. You know, a little, my little hombrecito, yes. like my abuela's little boy. I was a little blonde. I was blonde until I was like wow. four years old. Oh. Until you were four? A lot of kids are yeah. so, have such light hair. And then, I mean, like you have jet black hair. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But my grandma used to call me uh, mi piojito blanco. Which mm -hmm. means my little piece of lice, which it's how, it's <laughs> how Cuban, Cubans will kind of like, they'll, insult, they'll give you a compliment that's also an insult, you know? They're like, hey, look, it's good though. And it's, it's not even yeah. a full lice, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just a little piece yeah, of yeah, lice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have sons. Chris really um, is in a sort of constant battle about. Um, getting his daughter's ears pierced. You got to just bypass oh, all of that. I did. I did. Yeah. How old were you when you got your ears pierced? I was pierced? a baby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's like fully like newborn pictures of me like, <laughs> 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 so 
funny. Just like right away. Yeah. yeah. And then I remember when I was older and like some and and learning for the first time that it was like a big deal uh-huh, yeah. for uh we'll just say certain cultures. Yeah. Uh to like get White people. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh to get their ears pierced and like 13 and it's like you're a woman and I'm like what the fuck am I doing <laughs> oh no am I a harlot like what <laughs> just being real confused about like is this scandalous that I have these um yeah but yeah I got to bypass that have you pierced your daughter's ear- ears no, yet no I've been fighting it. Mom, it did the woman come over once yeah there's like a, there's a my mom has a friend and I'm like of course she does a random, she has a million of those friends and each friend is like has their own specialty it's like yeah. A team. It's like this one is the getaway driver, and this one's yeah. the helicopter driver. Cubans this one. always got a guy. Always, <laughs> always got, got a guy. guy. I got a guy. <laughs> uh, and so my, there's this random lady over, and I'm like, and my mom's like, "Hey, this is Bob." And I was like, "You're not piercing your ears." She's done that for ear piercing. She's done it for baptisms. <laughs> like, oh, like mm-hmm. you know, she's like, she's trying. Did to... Did she show up to your house with a priest? Like, no, oh. no, no, but <laughs> like a pastor and the yeah. little. Yeah, yeah. Vile, you Go know, on. but yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, just like, um, we're doing this I today. Know. You're like, that's an Aquafina bottle. She's like, it's blessed. It's yeah. fine. It's holy. Uh, but yeah, she's sneaky and she's always wow. trying to like get that pipe. But the earrings have been, it, it's been. It's been a thing. It's been a thing. Yeah. But luckily boys don't have to do that. Boys actually just have to get a tattoo of Che Guevara with an X through them. And that's it. That's, and then that's, that's it. it. That's and it. then they are just good th- Cuban thumbs boys. Down. Just like a thumbs, thumbs down. 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 All over Chase. Why don't you rage for the machine? (laughs) Yeah. Is your husband Cuban as well? Yes. Okay. All right. So they've got Cuban on Cuban. Ugh, action going on. Making me feel like a failure. <laughs> over here. Just white wife. I mean, I, no, I didn't kidding. say it. <laughs> oh my gosh, your your parents must be so proud. The, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, they tried to like play it cool at first, but you know, as soon as we left the room, they were like, "Oh my god, it's really happening!" Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> we're so happy. And he's beautiful. Ugh, he's so good looking. He's like a model. Oh, it's yeah. It's I showed my mom, so I told my mom I was talking to you and she got very excited and uh, we showed her a picture of your husband, you know, because she's always at, she, cause I, I knew what, and she went, oh, wow. <laughs> I hope he doesn't listen to this. He's going to be walking around. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Still got he it. Knows. <laughs> he knows. He yeah. knows. The world lets him know. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. I know. Sometimes, like once in a blue moon, he'll be like, I got checked out today. I'm like, you get checked out every day you just happen to notice today <laughs> congratulations are there any traditions that your family's trying to pass on that you don't really want to pass on that much oh uh, you know i think we got kind of lucky in that sense like our parents are either really chill or just like very broken in by like america or their own families like david has two brothers that are, have had kids that are like much, he was the last wow. one to have kids his, and their kids are already like in college and so I think we got his parents just sort of like yeah whatever like we, we already did this yeah. we had all these fights we're not going to do this anymore and um and yeah my parents are pretty laid back so we we kind of have lucked out in that department although I do think there was on both sides um Let's just say, like, a little bit of, like, passive-aggressive disappointment with, like, the names we chose for our sons. (gasps) Wow. And a little bit of, like, pretending not to be able to pronounce them. (laughs) (laughs) Eso. No, mommy, it's Enzo. Enzo. Eso. (laughs) (laughs) And then Axel was a whole other. (laughs) Axel. Axel. No, no. Axel. Axel. We even like try to put like a little, you know, Spanish accent on it. Um, and you know, uh, we're gonna call him Alex. Okay? Yeah, we're gonna call him Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they have different and then, you know, it's like eventually they learned how to say it. I'm so sorry. How old did you say Enzo is? I don't think I said no, yeah. I was like, uh, I gotta know how old Enzo is. Yeah. He's uh he's seven, he's almost eight. He'll be um, he can watch Axel, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm like, I'm I'm testing it out. You know, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to train them to um, like on Sunday mornings, I'm trying to put like breakfast bars on the kitchen counter and their water bottles mm-hmm. and just be like, 
go. Yeah. Yeah. You're I like want to get food, that. You're like food. There's water. You're like a Holiday Inn Express. There's iPads. <laughs> Help yourself. Help yourself. There's a continental breakfast <laughs> in the kitchen. Don't oh. wake me up. Beverages. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm really close to that, too. I'm six and four. Okay, yes. Yeah. So and it's so, like. Oh, I can see. taste it. Can it's taste almost it. there. Oh, yeah. 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 So I imagine you were pregnant while you were filming Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yes. Okay. Did they do any really funny tricks to try and hide your... Yeah. When I was pregnant with Enzo, they hid it. So I just was always standing Bags. behind a thing, <laughs> had a big bag. One of our... He he was our... He ended up being our DP, but at, on that season, he was still a camera operator, Rick Page. What up, Rick? <laughs> um, he... He had a little notebook in his back pocket, and every time they would put me behind something, he would whip out the notebook and write down what it was. And then he made me a shirt at the end of the season with like a list of everything I stood behind. Oh, oh, it was really sweet. <laughs> and then they had my character pretend to be pregnant because I was so pregnant. Yeah. yeah. I gave birth like five days after we wrapped. Wow. So I was like nine months pregnant and ju- just. Nine months pregnant. That's all you need to know. No, right. And so they, for the last two episodes, they wrote my character <laughs> going undercover pretending to be a pregnant lady. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> wow. And yeah. And then Joe Latrulio, his wife, we were, our due dates were two weeks apart. So they had us in the same uh, storyline for the last two episodes. I think just thinking like if we lose one of them, <laughs> we can just like write them both out somehow. And so they just like, so Yeah. It's like a little Easter egg for. Do you do you look back on those seasons? Because like photos of you when you're pregnant, like it's like even if your belly is hidden, it's like my hair looked pregnant. You know, like yeah. everything about you is I, so different. Oh Are you just God. like don't show me those seasons, or is it like kind of nostalgic to be like, oh my God, there's always going to be this time capsule mm-hmm. of this time here's, when I felt. Here's the thing, and I'm gonna. You're gonna hate when I say the first part, but okay. then I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> bring not. it I'm gonna I redeem it on the second part, okay? So the first time I was pregnant, pretty much whole pregnancy was in that season. The pregnancy never reached my face. Wow, boys, this is what they say about boys. It was incredible. Mm-hmm. Like, and and even all the women, all the moms, you know, that work on the crew were like, "Your face isn't bloated at all." Wow. Like, I, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. I'm just fucking lucky, man. Yeah. Second time? Yeah. Not so much. (laughs) My pregnancy showed on my face first. Immediately, yeah. Before my body. It was real weird. And so it was like I, you know, made up for it Mm -hmm. the second time around. And I only worked the second time during my second trimester. And then my character was pregnant and they actually had to pad me to make me look more pregnant, which felt weirdly cruel. Yeah. Uh, so we have this thing called the Struggle Wand. We found it in a dumpster out back. <laughs> and we, when you're holding it, you can tell us anything you're struggling with with parenthood right now. Oh, man, so much. Um. Oh, so my son is three. He will soon be four. And it feels like he's trying to get the last of all his toddlerisms out of his system before his fourth birthday. Mm-hmm. And so... Just having a lot of tantrums to have a tantrum, (laughs) Mm -hmm. looking for things to have a tantrum. Like we went to the pumpkin patch. It was lovely. We had a great time. Yeah. So sweet. Then literally every day this week since the pumpkin patch, I want to go to the pumpkin patch. (laughs) Pumpkin patch is not open, bud. It's a school day. But I want it to be. (laughs) I want it now. Take me now. Just being completely psycho and then like crying every day at drop off which now has just become like a thing Mm -hmm. it's part there are some days where he's like legit upset and then there are some days where I'm like this is the best performance of your life (laughs) (laughs) because you know the moment you go out of view then they're like all right what are we gonna do oh he does he does a change right in front of me we'll be in the car Having a great time, smiling, laughing. We get out of the car, and it's like he remembers. Mm, He sees the mm -hmm. gate, and he goes, oh, shit, I'm supposed to be upset. (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, literally, his smile goes away. And he goes, "Mm, and he just frowns, and he starts hiding behind my leg. And I go, nope, nope, we're not going to do We're not going to do this today. And then, yeah, he just... Uh. Yeah. Wow. So it's it's now just like a thing. Now we're in this battle. That little thing that when when it's just like, oh, I've just decided out of uh-huh. the blue that we have been going to daycare for so long, and now it's just like 
now I'm going to scream and the people have to like pull me away. Oh, yeah. And then it's just, you feel Fizz. so horrible. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm such a monster. And then you come pick them up. They're like, hey, I don't want to come. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. <laughs> Uh, so at the end of the show, what we love to do is uh, put things in timeout. Anything that you hate about parenting, uh, you get to put in a timeout. Ooh. We'll go first. Yes. You can go at the end. Great. Chris, Megan. I'll go first. All right. Oh, man. I would like to put uh, maybe anxiety. Mm, okay. Or stress. Someone's I like that. put. A, I think someone's put uh, anxiety on timeout before, but it was like the anxiety that you push on to your mm-hmm. kids, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they get anxious. I'm just talking about my own personal Anxiety. I classic feel anxiety. Classic. Old school. Classic, <laughs> which is new to me. Mm. This, like, I think the stakes in your life get so much higher. When I was like a single guy, I, uh, I'd be like, um, I have to Shazam a song in time. Like yeah. that. That yeah. was like, <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, no, okay, it's it's the B fifty twos. I knew it. Uh, <laughs> but now the stakes are so high, and I'm back. Kid, and then I got a house. It's it's tough, you know. Like I'm like, it took me so long to, to make it to here in stand up comedy. Yeah. It took twelve years before I got to quit day jobs, you know. And then finally, I was like, okay, we got my wife and I got married, good place financially, have a kid, get a house. Now there's no industry, <laughs> and then there's World War Three. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> Um, I'm going to put on time out. Conrad has recently gotten into Sesame Street and I love it. Mm. It's just like this. I I think like Sesame Street is truly doing the Lord's work. And like their sketches are so funny. I watched one today that was like Cookie Monster in Les Mis. And it was like better than anything I've seen on (laughs) SNL in years. I have seen that sketch. (laughs) All of the Cookie Monster musical sketches are good. Gold. Yes, they did the they did the They're Walking so Dead. They yeah. did, but with, uh, but with Cookie Monster and like Cookie, uh, like <laughs> get these writers in sketch comedy oh for grownups. Like they are top notch. But that being said. I do find Elmo to be basic um, <laughs> and sort of the least interesting of the entire Sesame Street uh, Yeah, he's crew. the baby. He's the baby. Yeah, and I, so I'd specifically like to put on Time Out the song, Happy, happy, dance, dance. Oh happy, God. happy, dance, uh-huh. dance. Oh and like, you see yeah. you see Elmo's legs now. Yes, well, it's my, very upsetting. My nephew walked in, he goes, oh, I never got to see Elmo's legs. <laughs> like, yeah. David it really, it puts a level of like it, a creepiness on yes. him. We're just like, get your fucking legs off the screen. <laughs> Did you, you, gross. They, I never thought about your legs. I hate looking at them. Show, I thought maybe you just had two wheels or something. They don't move the, the way the rest of his body moves. They don't. Oh, they, I feel like they're you, a little too long. They're too long? Yeah. And you can tell that it, they're just kind of like, just, no, not, not maybe it, like yeah. maybe not attached around. to the rest of his body. The it's Count's very legs disturbing. are weird too because they always show the Count's feet yeah. because when they're like, Oh, that's yeah. done 14 times. And he has those One, tiny. Two, three, four, <laughs> five. So, and they but show they're like his, lifts. They're, they're always lifts. They're, yeah. His legs are weird. They, um, they're, they, I, when I see them, I go, I imagine I'm a hostage. <laughs> and I see my captor walking in and he's got weird khaki pants and for some reason, saddle dancing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's Whatever. playing happy, happy dance, dance on a loop. Um, so I'm going to put Pokemon on timeout. Mm. Uh, Olive got into Pokemon because of one friend. Uh, That's and, all it takes. And that like, is all it takes. Sounds like you want to put that friend on timeout. I know. <laughs> then Gus got into it. Oh. And it is now the only thing they talk about. They... They have no other. They just sit in the car with their with their little binders. It's our fault, of course, <laughs> with the little binders and just like trading cards back and forth. And they talk about the cards. They talk about Pokemon. They talk about points. They talk about battles. They do battles. And Gus is four. So <laughs> Gus is just like, is it pretty? <laughs> <laughs> and then Olive's just like, I destroy you. <laughs> and then she like takes the card. I'm like, Olive, you can't do it. He's four years old. He can't read the card yet. 
Uh, and so, yeah. So now the school has banned Pokemon from the school because uh, of Olive. Because no! Olive was bringing her Pokemon cards to school. And we kept saying, like, you can. not she's like, oh, I only bring them out after school, father. Uh, and it's total bullshit. She's just bringing them out every band. time. And now they sent to home a thing. It's like, no toys, no Pokemon cards at school. Wow. Uh, so now she's like, okay, well, we have to have a Pokemon party. And I was like, uh, you can have, like, a Pokemon play date. She's like, all right, one, two, three. We have to have six people. And I'm like, we're not having six Pokemon enthusiasts at the house. These kids are all lunatics about this shit. Uh, so I think it's maybe, it's going to like, though I've known kids who have had to have, had to stop because they got too obsessive about Pokemon. Um, so anyway, we might be on that path, but hopefully we're not there yet. Oh my God, Melissa. that's amazing. <laughs> I would like to put on timeout pretty much any toy that makes noise. Yeah. I'm like almost out of the toy phase, which is, it is a little sad when it happens, like with the older one, like he's not, you know, he's like Legos, mm -hmm. YouTube. <laughs> I would like to put YouTube on time. Yes. Now, so, um, but yeah, he's not like he'll play with toys occasionally, but he's not like asking for toys or he's more into like games and things like that. But the little one is still into toys. Um, but yeah, I anything that makes noise because it's never good noise. It's mm -hmm. never a noise you want to hear. It's a noise that triggers you every time you hear it. It's always you always go through a period where you hear that noise mm -hmm. way too much. And yeah, I wish I had just made some weird rule about like only silent toys in the house. <laughs> wish I had been one of those crunchy fucking moms is like yeah. we only do wooden toys. What is the wooden toy bitches? <laughs> yes. you know? So proud. Those bitches have it right. Yeah. Have There's... you ever have you ever had a like a at, like at nighttime, you've heard. Oh, I hate you've been it. Like, it just goes oh, off. There's a demon here, and you're yeah. like, oh no, it's just Fisher Price. Like it, ri like you'll oh, hear. And it feels like Poltergeist because yeah. it just feel, like it just goes gosh. off in the other room, and you're like, yes, <gasps> yes. And you come in there, a and it's just like black house, yeah. and you just hear. Oh, so... nee, 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 <laughs> or it just like runs in your head yeah. like a song that you can't get out of your head. My son had this like Chippendale guitar when he was little, and it was like one, two, three. <laughs> 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 and just, I mean, there was like another one that it would just oh my god and I would yeah I would just be yeah. laying in bed and I'd hear I would hear that let's <laughs> rock and roll I'm like oh my god <laughs> we should be able to put some of these toy inventors in jail yeah. you know there should be some kind like, of public shaming right. yeah. uh, Melissa thank you so much you were absolutely wonderful thanks for having me oh man she was great she was so great. Very that was funny. So, I felt like I was talking to like a like a dear cousin of mine. Yeah. Having like a nice catch up. It was yeah. really sweet. She was so also so naturally yeah. funny and a planet. little a little peek behind the curtain. Sometimes actors are not normal. <laughs> <laughs> but she was just one of the so, girls. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know what? Let's bring her in. Let's have her be a fourth co host. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm in, I'm interested. Uh, so, if you want to get your story on the show, you can. Uh, just call us at 424-570-KIDS. That's 424-570-KIDS. Or you can email us at ilovemykid at wondery.com. Um, and make sure to start it with I Love My Kid But. And if you do, maybe we'll use it on the show just like this. I love my kid, but she's a fucking know-it-all. Okay? <laughs> my whole thing is this. She's eight years old. Yeah. Now, if you know how to do the homework, why are you asking me for help? <laughs> she has this thing that she does, I don't know, at least four times a week, if not five, okay? <laughs> Where she comes in and she's like, she's a math whiz, and she's getting her math done, and then she'll get stuck on a problem, and then she'll ask me for help. And then I give her the help, oh, so you gotta do X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. Oh, my gosh, that's one, two, three. <laughs> but she does this, and then, I, I mean, I tell her what to do, and then she'll come back and be like, that's not how you do it. <gasps> well, ma'am, if you knew how to do it, why did you come to me? Because <laughs> you know everything. However, deep down, I'm very, like, I, I'm very back and forth with it because, on one hand, I'm glad that she challenges people and she asks mm -hmm. questions mm -hmm. and she's not, like, nobody's getting over on her, right? <laughs> So uh, as an adult, and so I'm very grateful for that. But at eight years old, 
the 90s kid in me, you know, I'm 34. The 90s kid in me wants to be like, well, if you know every goddamn thing, why the fuck are you coming to <laughs> But I don't. And, you know, I just say, well, if that's what you think it is, honey, go ahead and put that down. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but anyways, we had adoption day, um, September 29th, 2023. Um, and we are very happy. And, you know, for the cherry on top, I'd just like to also put uh, – homework on timeout as well so we have a circle time and timeout homework homework it fucking sucks <laughs> and third grade it just gets even worse mm-hmm. agreed Amazing. agreed what Wait, a great now call. did she say a, what a great adoption call. day Adoption. Their adoption day was September 29th. Yeah, oh, congratulations. Cool. Awesome. congratulations. Yeah, um, but yeah, homework for third graders. I'm dumb. No, no. I am I, no. not looking forward to it. Yeah, it's really. I I, um, I I have some family family members that are child know it alls, and it really. I'll be like, oh, is that a a sea lion? And they're like, it is a sea lion otter cross, and you're just like, oh, <laughs> it's a stuffed animal. <laughs> <laughs> Marine biologist. <laughs> I know. I also love that. What I love about the call too is that it's just like this thing sucks, but also on the other hand, it is going to make her a more powerful person yes. in the world. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Because like, it kid's is a boss. I know, and that the fact that the like the parent mindset is always those two things. Yeah. Like this is really annoying, but she's going to be better off for having. <laughs> but also the tone in her voice when she was like. um if that's what you think it is, go yeah. ahead. Like it was like very loving and compassionate yeah. and patient. Yeah. But then she let it all out on the voice call. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was a great call. And you so know what? Uh, uh, parents with adopted children, they need to be able to talk shit too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys have any uh, thing to plug? Um, I'm going to be in Seattle at Laughs Comedy Club December 1st and 2nd. Awesome. I'm working on dates. Uh, you can always see what I'm up to on my Instagram at Chris Garcia Comedy. Uh, December 8th and 9th in Philly, December 10th in Pittsburgh for me. And I'm Kurt Brownler. I'm Chris Garcia. I'm Megan Gailey. And remember, your kid is eventually going to resent you no matter what you do. 